Hey cutie patooties, how we doing? Happy Wednesday? <laughs> it's Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, yes, it's definitely Wednesday today. It's definitely Wednesday. I know this at a big long meeting. It is Wednesday. Happy What's it stream day? Happy, happy stream day. <laughs> how are you doing? Have you had a good day? It's been such a long time since we saw you last. A whole 24 hours. I see your cookie ma your message cookie twice in two days. We sure are lucky. It's it's because we missed the Monday stream. We felt so bad that we uh, we really wanted to do a stream with you. So tomorrow and then today's our normal scheduled day. So this is the last stream of the week. And actually, on that note, Jamie and I will not be able to stream. Oh, that's the stream for us. We will not be able to stream next week because we're not going to be here. But um, we'll be back on schedule. From the week after is the plan is the plan you like the lighting thank you amber lee what color are we today i think this is set to my video lighting yeah it is so this guy here is like a ready orangey color like a like quite a rich peach <laughs> and this guy is a very heavy magenta but both of them are being like bounced off of big pieces of furniture so just kind of diffuses. I'm, I'm sure you didn't need that much detail, but I am a geek, and so you shall have it. Are we ready for some more book degradation? We absolutely are. We are going to be playing Nancy Drew today. We're going to continue. So let's be flag. Yes, <laughs> exactly, Emily. <laughs> I love that. Oi, oi, oi. Sorry, I missed the stream yesterday. Not a problem, my love. I hope you had a good time. Months and hope you're well. Thank you, Shabba, gorgeous sweet Ethan. Touch, Shabba, sweet touch, Shabba, sweet touch, Shabba, Jamie, ooh, Shabba, HMM. <laughs> Thank you, gorgeous Ethan. Thank you for subbing. And with Prime, which means it's three for you. Three? It's free for you, but it still supports us. So thank you very much. Super appreciate it. For anybody else who doesn't know, I'm not saying this so that you have to use it on us. You have, if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime. If you have Twitch Prime, you have one free sub to a creator of your choice every single month. Every month. So, you know, you might as well use it for some of your favorite creators. Go share the love. I have a general chemistry exam tomorrow. You're excited and a bit scared. You've got this plant. You have got this. What is chemistry? Busy bubbles. <laughs> Hydrogen. <laughs> Why do I know nothing about chemistry? I know nothing about chemistry. I'm mind blown. So there you go, you're already gonna do better than me, babe. You have got this. <laughs> hey, Lady Banksy, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome to the stream. We um, we are gonna be playing Nancy Drew today. We are also, bless you, Ethan. I'm glad that you're here. We are going to be doing it with Jamie. Jamie's uh, just a little busy. He's taken up by something at the moment, but he'll be joining us in about 10 minutes, I think. Maybe five minutes. So uh, we'll wait for the lovely Jamie. Until then, I thought we should refresh ourselves um, on, <laughs> on these copious, extensive notes that we've taken. You're having a 24 hour blood pressure measurement today. Oh, I'm sorry, Silent Lilac, so you're stressful. Sending calming vibes to you. How does that work? Is it like a, a cuff that you wear for 24 hours? Just wondering if you, if you don't feel comfortable sharing, that's totally fine. Um, is the pillow behind you a macaron or a hamburger? Right there. It is a giant jammy dodger. <laughs> Two guesses as to who's that pillow belongs to. <laughs> um, it's a giant jammy dodger. We do have a burger one, though it sits downstairs on our sofa. We have a giant burger. We have a giant donut. We have a giant jammy dodger. I feel like we have another one, like that's specifically of this range. I know we bought Jamie's mum a giant strawberry. That one's really fun. And I really wanted this giant aubergine. It was so cool, but um, we didn't get it in time. And then the shop didn't sell it anymore. And I was like, oh, so sad. They also had a giant sausage. That would have been fun, but it was just a big brown log, really. So 
Yeah. Yeah, and it pumps up every 15 minutes. Oh, well, really silent lilacs. You're going to have... Lady Pinks is laughing at my giant Um, You're going to have a cool superhero band and you don't have to feel or do any specific thing, right? You just live your life and they're just measuring exactly what you are. So it's like having a tiny paparazzi superhero band on you for 24 hours, sending you lots of love. Do you perchance like food-based decor? <laughs> do you know what? I didn't even realise that they were all food-based. A giant pea, could you imagine? Just like a big green ball. <laughs> hey Josh, how you doing, sweet? Mm. I don't, yeah, I don't think they had non-food ones, to be fair. Do you, I, I was thinking about this. Even our prints, right? Like, this has marshmallows on it. This is a flamingo pretending to be an ice cream. This is gummy bears. And this is Jamie's, so that doesn't really count. But my point is... And, and there's a pizza slice, and I call you peaches. Like, everything is to do with food. I'm not mad about it. A giant watermelon slice, that would look really cool. A giant teddy, yes. Well, we've got blow high right like you got, like, the giant sharks. So, yes, giant animals would be cute. I really like the idea of a frog, and I'm not quite sure why. I could do a frog. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of what else would be cool. Like, to have a giant pillow of. I've seen, you're going to think this is bananas. <laughs> you have to, a giant, a giant peach. Now that would be cool. All right. You have to envisage this with me, okay? Imagine a bed, like a, like a single bed. Okay. This is a real thing. This exists. It's a single bed and it's made of like plastic. Think of like, um, I don't know, like a kid's toy, you know, like those little plastic tables that they have that goes in dolls' houses, like that, and it's bright yellow and plastic, not sounding so great so far, I hear you. And then the headboard is a giant packet, like it's a headboard size, a massive packet that looks exactly like a McDonald's chip packet, like big and red. And then inside the headboard, because it's hollow, are they're the size of me. Giant chips. Like inside <laughs> the red packet that is the headboard. So when you're going to bed on like this chip, <laughs> you're like lie inside and you just reach over your head and you can pull out these massive chips, which are long body pillows, exactly, that you can then like cuddle as you go to sleep. I saw it on the internet somewhere, and it blew my mind. I don't think I would want it. I just love the idea of having like, an interactive bed. It's just so freaking cool. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I would love to think of other ideas and to make something that didn't want me want junk food all the time. That would be <laughs> an ideal. Yeah. I don't know if you could have, like... <laughs> is, it, is it bad how much I've been thinking about this? There's another thing that I was thinking of, right? This doesn't exist, I haven't seen it. But imagine if this did exist, right? Imagine having a sofa, but one that doesn't have, like, a bottom. You know where they normally have legs and you can put stuff underneath? But I'm always scared that there's, like, baddies hiding under there. Or, like, the cats are gonna come and be like, bleep, 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 bleep and play with your ankles. So imagine if it didn't exist, it was just like a big, poofy, brown thing, and then the entire sofa was designed to be like a donut. So it was like covered in like a pink icing all the way around, and it had these big Velcro fat sprinkles on the outside, all over it, so whenever you wanted to like chill out or sleep or to have something to work on, you just go around, you grab a sprinkle, and boom, you have a lap cushion. You grab a sprinkle, and boom, you have a headboard. <laughs> a conversation pit donut. Yes. Hi, Dan. How you doing, sweet? Welcome, welcome. Again, food. Again, food. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, Magnets. That would be so cool. And then you don't have the annoyance of the Velcro sticking to your hair or to your stuff. Magnetic sofa donut. That is what we're going to call it. Love it. 
I love it. We have made something here together, friends. This is a magical moment, and I'm very, very grateful. <laughs> right, um, if we have any more ideas, please. A, a giant lobster. A conversation crustacean. That would be very cool. A giant prawn would also work really well, because I like the shape. You could, like, curl up in him and just be like... Bleh, bleh. <laughs> Imagine, this is going a bit morbid, but imagine if you could like zip and peel like the lobster or the prawn and you could like cuddle up inside because they have like that little swirly shape to them, don't they? <laughs> um, also food though, we need non-food ideas. <laughs> I'm trying to convince myself that my world does not revolve around food. I just can't think of anything else that would be really cute. The only thing that's just come to mind is like a massive hammock that looks like a giant bra. But honestly, oh, I think that would just be weird. Yeah. <laughs> it would be cute. <laughs> Ethan says, in Hong Kong, there was a time when a giant pea plushie was so popular. It had a zip on the side and there were four smaller pea plushies inside. That is so cute. That is so cute. Thank you for the bits. Kaplooey. To Yui, Ethan. I had like a mini version of that. It wasn't a plushie, it was like this big. And I sent it out to like a bunch of viewers. I think it was when I hit like 20K, I was like, oh, I'm gonna buy 20p toys. <laughs> Cause that's the sort of thing that I thought was adding value to the world. Oh wow, how I was gravely mistaken. But but they were really cute. They were tiny pea toys like this, and you could like pop them up like this. It's kind of like a fidget toy. And they all had little faces on them. So when they popped out, they were like, I, I see the sapphic nature, Amber. I do. Dan says a slight downside that my back, which has magnetic metal in it, might stick to the sofa. Oh, that would make it very difficult to get up. <laughs> if it was comfortable enough, maybe that wouldn't be a, such a bad thing. It'd be a great excuse. Sorry I didn't come to school today. I was literally stuck to my sofa. <laughs> um, I don't... Is it like... Yeah, yeah, no, some people do have like very magnetic things like as body appendages because Rolly I know a question that he gets asked is or a comment that he gets it's like oh, don't go near a magnet and he's done like a couple shorts where he's like shown him putting magnet all around his piercings and he's like it's, it's not a big deal like what what are you expecting to happen um yeah I think that I just think Rolly's pretty badass to be fair. But no, some things I, I uh, yeah, understand are actually magnetic. Put magnets around a bra. We're combining the idea into something that's turning into a bit of a nightmare there, plants, and I I don't know where it's going. <laughs> oh. Rolly is amazing chaos. You know, you have like those matrixes and they're like, was it chaotic? Lawful. Good. Bad. And then there's neutral. Rolly is chaotic, good. And Jamie, I think, is neutral, good. Everybody says he's lawful, good. But he's not. You gotta watch out for my lovely Jamie. He's a little, he's a little, he's a little less wholesome than you. It's like OT. He keeps telling us that there's treasure places. There's no treasure. There is no treasure. <laughs> They're absolutely in the good column, but they're more neutral than they are lawful. I tell you, I've got it figured out. <laughs> Your cat came to watch stream? Hey, boo kitten cat. How you doing, sweet? Jamie is sweet, silent chaos. <laughs> Alex too? Al oh, okay, no. Alex, for anyone who is familiar with Alex Bertie, Alex is absolutely lawful good. He is the epitome of lawful good. If I ever have a problem with like my moral compass, where I'm like, should I? Should I? <laughs> you know how some people say, what would Jesus do? Mine is, what would Alex do? Because <laughs> if I do what Alex would do, I know I'm doing the right thing. He, I, that boy is so lawful good. He's a, he's a good egg. He's a good egg. Sweet silent chaos with his pizzas. Which, what alignment are you? I don't know. I'd like to 
think I was good. I don't think I'm bad. Am I chaos? Am I neutral or am I lawful? You can tell me. I don't think I'm lawful. I think if we're not rating Jamie as lawful in particular, the pure chaos. <laughs> but I don't feel like I'm rolly level, right? Right? <laughs> Somewhere between neutral and chaos. Thank you. I take. I'll take it. I'll do. Have you seen him jump scare human one? I need to see this. I need to see this. He's. I've only seen OT virtually, and the amount of jump scares that OT is personally re blip, 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 personally responsible for in games like Phasmo. No, 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 no. <laughs> Way calmer than Rolly. Yeah. I. I. I love Rolly though. I. I love the chaos. Your lawful good silent violets. Yes, what are what are you viewers? What would you rate yourself as? <laughs> I love that human one has a compilation. I'll have to take a look at YouTube hello, for that. Hello, hello. Just got accepted into the interpreting program at my college Bose Love Bose Love. How is everyone? Yay, just Jay. Go you. Congratulations, my love. Some yay squids for you. What would we rate Lux? Gorgeous Lux is absolutely also chaotic good lux is just a an extent lux and roly you know those i've seen those jelly babies that like are together they're like single jelly babies but they have one arm touching and they kind of fuse that's roly and lux they are the same person <laughs> roly was telling me this himself um and it's so true i look at them and it's it's honestly like I need to, I should be paying to be in their presence. They are so funny. They are so entertaining. They just make me laugh so much. I love them. Everyone needs to, like, each of you. Oh, well, it's good that we're all friends to all then, huh? <laughs> Lux is the same chaos as me, but when she's probably the chaos on the charts, I can see that stardust. I can see that. <laughs> You're the lawful good of lawful good. No, you shouldn't unha you shouldn't hate it, unstoppable shark. I mean, you do, but like, embrace who you are. If that's who you are, that's amazing. And everybody needs a lawful good. You need like, there's no D and T, there's no D and D team that's like successful with all the same people. You need to have like. Lux is the mad scientist of good. I love that. We should let her know. Jesse and Claude. Oh. I would put Jesse and Claude in lawful good. <laughs> Cassie, you reckon Jamie's chaotic good? We were in it earlier on in stream, we were saying that Jamie would be neutral. He's not quite the chaos of um, rolling Lux. I, I definitely think we're all in that good column there. Everyone that's talking. The mood ring of YouTube. <laughs> You'd say you're lawful good, Ethan. But then I can shift for a bit when things get out of hand. No, Vimpia's raiding us. All right, here we go. Here we go. What is Navimpia? I know what Navimpia are, in my mind. <laughs> We're um, talking about where our lovely friends on the internet, gorgeous Navimpia, are um, set on that little matrix of like, good, neutral, evil, chaotic, neutral, lawful. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for the raid, my loves. Hi, hi. Did you have fun? A pair of idiots, says Kim. <laughs> no. <laughs> chaotic neutral? Is that what you put yourself as? I was going to say chaotic good. <laughs> yeah, I, I reckon Vimpia probably, probably tops Rolly and Lux on that spectrum of chaotic. They're definitely up there. My first taste of Novimpia, I'm pretty sure we've spoken about this. Um, I think maybe when we raided Novimpia a couple times back, I can't remember. But it was um <laughs> it was at this YouTube event where they were hosting um <laughs> they were hosting a Pride version of what is the show called? You are the weakest link. Goodbye and when I tell you, I had a new asshole handed to me 
that day. Wow. <laughs> with love. With love. Um, I hope you had a wonderful stream, my love. What were you guys doing? Let me know. Thank you so much for sending your gorgeous fam lamp this way. Is it not called The Weakest Link? Is it? You are The Weakest Link. Goodbye. I'm gonna sound so rude. Is that lady still alive? Because the only memories like of her that I can really see are from the Doctor Who episode. And I know that wasn't real life. <laughs> Can you see- can you see why I was the weakest link? <laughs> Click is chaotic evil. <laughs> well, he- he- he did bring out a demon, which now sits on our shelves. She did count down for a while. Oh, Venus boy. What's her name? Anne? Anne? I can't remember. I can see her. I can see the orange. Anne Robinson. Anne Robinson. Yes. She, she, just looking at her makes me shit myself. She was like, there's Asian parents and then there's Anne Robinson. <laughs> and I didn't think that I could be that scared <laughs> of a white lady on TV. But there you go. There you go. Um, Ramesh Frank and Nathan host it now. Countdown? Or you are the weakest link. Goodbye. I literally watched that episode yesterday, The Way the Robot... Yes. This <laughs> is so mean. <laughs> yes, Bukit, and it is a thing outside of Doctor Who. She is really rude. Do you know a lot of TV from that, like, time, that generation, is just really rude. Jamie and I were re-watching... Oh my god. What is that show? Is it Super Size vs. Super Skinny, I want to say? I think it's that one. It was definitely a show to do with weight. We were watching like a bunch of them. And um, it's the one where they do like these little segments and there's this really kooky lady who, um, I, I hated the show. I hated this section that kept coming up specifically. In each episode, she'd be like, oh, we're gonna look at, um, I don't know. I'm oh, like, no examples come to my head right now. Like, we're gonna look at goat yoga as a form of exercise and she'll like grab a bunch of people from off the street and be like come and do goat yoga with me but the things that she would say she'd be like haha you're so fat like she was just she was just so rude like unbelievably rude where i think even it, even at that time i cannot imagine that it was ever acceptable julian mckeith is that the person i'm speaking about i have to, I have to google this now hang on Julian McKeith. Ha! Yes! Julian McKeith! Big no. Big no. If television, you are what you eat. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. I mean, I, I get it. It was like of the time. I mean, I've literally just gone onto her wiki page and it says here she's faced criticism during the covid pandemic for promoting covid19 misinformation and anti-vax views and was described as a conspiracy theorist so um yeah that's that <laughs> she always said get off your big fat bottoms she said a lot worse and she, uh, she was she just made me like hate myself <laughs> mm -mm. in ways that that was not okay that sh sh was so problematic. Wait, are you talking about a different show? We had a show in that in America called The Biggest Loser. I think I've seen that on like the the um, late night TV that's on at like 2am. <laughs> she did it. Does anyone remember the Snog Mary Avoid show? Yes, where they just slated people's appearance and gave them a makeover. That was also pretty, pretty bad, right? And like there was this machine that would be like, oh, you're a goth, you're ugly. Let's make you into a cool kid. And they give them like blonde hair and a butt ton of makeup and be like, you're so beautiful now. <laughs> and they'd show them off to people on the street. And they'd be like, yeah, she's an eight, dude. I'd do that. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, good job, show. Good job. What am I thinking of? Is that not red void? It was a bad show. Two <laughs> thousands UK TV needs to be studied. Hi, gorgeous Jamie. I think you'd really like what we're talking about. Jamie McKeith. 
Oh, how did you know? Was I that loud? Yeah. Initially, we were talking about um, how different people... Have you not people... started playing yet? No, we're just having fun chatting. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. We have oh. rated you as not neutral good. Neutral good? Mm -hmm. For what? On that little matrix. Novimpia, who just rated us... Hello. ...rated themselves as chaotic neutral. I said chaotic good. Okay. But Novimpia said cha chaotic neutral. We've rated... Rolly and Lux as chaotic good. Okay. And Alex as lawful good. Mm. Did you see it? Yeah. Mm. And then we talk about TV shows and how um, chaotic we don't film. like. <laughs> Thank you. How we don't like. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. And Gillian Mc. McKeith. McKeith. Uh, was she from Super Size vs Super Skinny? Is that the show that was really problematic that she did? I mean, that show was problematic. Was she in that one? What weight show was she in? I don't know about that. Um, UK TV shows are absolutely... They're... They're... Insidious evil. They're not even chaotic evil, because they pose themselves as being lawful. But they're not. <laughs> Big Brother, though. <laughs> you used to really love Big Brother. Jamie would go to me and excuse me, Sharba. I can watch Big Brother. No, what? I want to, I can. Absolutely, because of psychology. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then we both got stuck watching Big Brother because it was so good. Aren't they rebooting Big Brother? I'm not sure. I think I saw something about it recently. They've got like two new presenters. And I recognise them from something. I think it's a good idea, though. I think it's probably good that it stopped. And we're seeing something else as well. Oh talking about UK TV, David Tennant is coming back for an appearance in the new Doctor Who. <laughs> Speaking of Gordon Ramsay... Was that you clapping or were you being a butterfly? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, Ramsay's restarting Kitchen Nightmares after 10 years. I didn't realise that stopped. So many idiot sandwiches coming! I thought that they were, I thought they were just... Endless episodes. I thought he just permanently did that. <laughs> he just permanently went to restaurants. There are just that many bad restaurants all yeah. around the world. All around America. David Tennant is amazing. The way that Anne Widdicombe was invited on Big Brother. Kim, who's Anne Widdicombe? Why do I recognise oh, that God. name? Oh no. What's happened? Oh, Probably so better that you don't know who Anne Widdicombe or don't remember who Anne Widdicombe is. Oh, Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, let's say, not talk about nightmare restaurants right now. Yeah, one, one thing play? to conclude, though, just so you know, and I'm very sad about this, the gorgeous Simi. What Simi? Neutral good, I would put Simi as. Hmm. Anyway, Simi burst a bubble that I will never forgive him for. He told me, he told the internet, and I watched it, that... That idiot sandwich clip is fake. It's not real. It's a skit. It's from a skit. What people kind of think sandwich would you it's be? It's from the show. But it's not from the show. What? It's from a comedy sketch. What kind of sandwich would you be? Do you want to hear what kind of also, sandwich I was today? you're chaotic good. You think I'm chaotic good? You're chaotic. Really? Yeah. In a different way. Okay. I'll take it. Um, you don't think you're neutral, do you? I thought I was neutral good. <laughs> Am I not neutral good? No, you're chaos. Thanks for joining Gorgeous Kim. Not a problem. Wow. Uh, it's a James Corner skip. Yup. Sad. Sad times. Sad times. Um, I wanted to show you what kind of idiot sandwich I was today, but I don't have headphones in order to replicate. I was with the Gorgeous it's Ollie. It's one word. Mm -hmm. You. You are a what sandwich? Idiot. Sandwich. No, but like, no, I mean like it doesn't have to be idiot. No, so I wanted to tell you about sandwich. something that I did today. Okay, but I want to know what kind of sandwich you are first. Internet. Kindly prescribe sweet potatoes, Jamie and I, a sandwich. There you go. <laughs> and for yourself, because I find this very interesting. Um, but as I tell you the story, I was with Ollie today. Ollie was helping me record my final two professional vocals for the EP that I'm releasing. So it's been a busy day. <gasps> it's been fun. Um, and a chaotic sandwich. 
Um, so that's Jamie, right? Clearly. So um, as we were doing that, he in his like studio setup, there's this. Is there's like the setup, the recording booth, and there's the headphones. But sometimes, very very occasionally, it's rare, the right ear will just conk out. And he was like, when the right ear conks out, you just need to move the cable like this because there's, there's so many cables involved. It's, it's, it's not a bad studio, is what I'm saying. So right ear conked out once. And I was like, and I fixed it. Later on in the day, I put it back on to go and do some harmonies. And the right ear conked out. And I was like, that's not working. And Ollie was expecting me to sing. And I was like, really trying to rush to get it sorted. It felt really uncomfortable. And I was like, put them on the wrong way. Ollie, babe, Ollie, your, your headphones are broken. And he came all the way over and it was like this. It was actually turned over. And he just went. And it could have died. I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh. Look, I've been singing for about five hours at this point. And I was very tired. But it was a lot. It was a lot. And I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and he was like, I was really hoping it would be that. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. On that note, show me Jamie peanut butter and jam. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Go on. I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to idiot sandwich me. <laughs> That's just so profoundly hilarious. I just sat there and I was like, I have a PhD. <laughs> no, they've taken it away. I have a PhD. I think like, what? <laughs> I, was very, I was very stupid. On the upside, I did everything else right. I just forgot that one time. Let's play the game. The game. <laughs> Jamie has a speechless sandwich. I like the fact that we're peanut butter and jam, though. Can we take that from Lady Banksy? I would clearly be the jam. <laughs> Mina said, Desco meal deal by Ella sandwich. Is that Ew. the sandwich you are? Oh, we are. Because I don't know how to read that. <laughs> oh, dear. Grape jelly sounds great. Hmm. <gasps> great, great. Jelly cool. Orange. Great grape orange cool. Crunchy peanut butter always. Smooth. No. It's not cre no creamy. Blasphemous. Creamy's a one of those words. It's like moist and cream. Smooth. Creamy. Smooth. I spoke a lot about buttery vocals today. Buttery. And bumblebees. I was like, there's like a bumblebee sitting in my throat, can you hear it? And he was like what the hell are you talking about? There's no other way to describe it. Do you mean a frog? No. Like, sometimes... I, okay. This isn't going to clip, right? If I do this... Ah, and if I do this... Ah, can you hear the bumblebee in the second one? Yeah. Ah, ah. Was it in the first one? No. Oh. <laughs> There's a bumblebee in the second one. It's like fuzzy and it's floating and I didn't know how to get rid of it. I don't think it's quite a head voice. I was just getting confused. Peanut butter and honey? I have not tried this. This sounds amazing. Reduced Tesco tuna sandwiches, me to be honest. You are my favourite sandbro- sandwich, Amber. If I found you, I'd be biting you. Sambra. Biting you? Buying you. Huh? You said sambra. Sandwich, Amber. I'm sorry. And... And you were a cute little yellow sticker. On that note. Ready? Yeah. This one you missed on Glee. We were playing Nancy Drew. I will Secrets love can kill. What happened? We've gone to a school where we are a detective pretending to be a school student because a guy called Jake died. We found out that Corinne Death. was meant to go to the dance with Daryl. But then went instead with Jake, <gasps> but now is calling Jake a creep, even <gasps> though he's passed away. The way that he supposedly passed away, Daryl found his body Horror. and said that somebody beat him up and threw him down the stairs. Oh, jeez. 
<laughs> I like this. Please continue. We also found out that Corinne comes from f- money. <gasps> Bananas. And apparently doesn't have money anymore. <gasps> and also, Daryl's family used to have a lot of money in the form of... Race cars. A military company. Iron Man. But it lost a lot of money and it's gone down the shitter. Bad stuff. And so Daryl also doesn't have a lot of money. Then we have sandwiches. this guy called Hurl. Beach. Hurl? Hal. 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 No, oh, the big muscly guy. Hal. Hulk. 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 Hector slash Hulk. Hulk. And he... What was his Hulk. partner in all of this? He... What is his part in all of this? I just didn't like that he was abused at the end. Face. He was like, blah, 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 Connie. And told us that Connie didn't have money. So we said to Connie, hey, this guy Hulk is talking shit about you. Gossip. Is it true that you don't have money? <gasps> I know, we were a little shit stirrer right there in that moment. And then we heard that she went to Hulk and hurt him. <gasps> Rude. So she's aggressive. And Rude. we found Hal Tanaka, who won... Cheat essay thingy and cheated he took it from a book that we found in Jake's locker and he's in line to get a scholarship and he doesn't deserve that scholarship but also we think that he's in this somehow with Connie because there's something in this clue sheet about Kanji Kanji and Kanji is potatoes what is Kanji a Japanese Writing of some kind. Right? Yes. And um, she's wearing it as a necklace. And it was in the clue. Okay. So, our first clue is a little poo that Jamie drew that says, Shaba is detective poopy. Then, oh, we found... We or found... should you be detective? The poopy. judo code, which was a number. And we called the number of the judo class that... Jake used to be a part of, and they were like, Projected. we'll call you if we're interested. Boop. And we were like, oh. So we're waiting Shabba. on that. Shabba. Yeah. Can you mind cool for me? No. Please. This was she somewhere. Where was this? this? Sigma Phi Kappa Delta? Delta? Alpha. Delta? Work. This was somewhere. It was on our letter. Um, we've also got the clue... His journal is my cash cow, and they all have these like weird. Not cash <laughs> these weird. Um, there was like clues all around on these notice boards, and they had um, these weird little things. So this one said XCR3, and we don't know what that means. Then there was another one here that said up, down, left, right, the first letters will help my plight, and that's H E colon U2. What's that? Then the find the morning edition and discover another crime. <gasps> the answer is in black and white. Who will do the Squeaky time? Singing. IRD2 and we found that paper R2D2. and it spoke about what did the paper speak about? The paper. Foreign objects. No, sir. Be with it. I don't know. The paper at the bottom that spoke about a crime. A pharmacy theft. They stole a drug. Yes. And there were some letters on that paper and I'm pretty sure oh, 1310 9 were big somewhere. Um then one said sin is on the bid. One said great great orange cool will play the alarm in the school. Which we know, and that's how we got crying away cool. to look in the teacher's corner. lounge. That's right, and we need to find something Swimming for the <laughs> for the username and the password, and we haven't done that. Then this one said, a crane contestant in a mask disguise won the prize money despite all the lies. Pigeon. And we think that was Jake, right? No. We think the mask contestant oh. is Jake? No, I don't remember. I think they killed Jake. The masked contestant in the Juno tournament. Judo tournament. I can't speak! Well, you're streaming, so anyway. be careful. Then it says, The hidden videotape will seal my murderous fate. One said, Put elements in order to open puzzles. And we're like, One, what's puzzles? And two, how do we do the elements? One said, Fifth map draw. One said, Student files under lock and key will show the lies of the doctor to be. Then one said, Oh, it's a long one. He did what it took to make the grade, even if it meant cheating, to keep up his charade, which we think is about how. A symbol of kanji, worn with great pride, reflects a big secret that someone must hide. Connie. What do you think is about Connie? Nowhere to turn to, nowhere to hide. Let the books in the library be your answer guide. But we can't get in the library for some reason. So and why did it say answer guide? I don't know. That's why couldn't it just it? say guide, guide or answer? You don't need both. Especially if you're saying hide, they just rhyme it with guide. 
A trophy was not the only prize, but also money of a greater size. Scholarship. Do you think that's about scholarship? I think Maybe. it might be to do with more money because Connie's family is out of money. Maybe. So I don't know. Then one said, did you write missing tap? T120. What does that mean? Mossing top. I can't read Jamie's writing. Missing. Tap. Tip. Top. Missing. Tap. It does say tap, doesn't it? What does fap. that mean? <laughs> Missing fap. You've heard it here first. Um, Lap. Secrets can kill. Ethan. Nap. I'm missing a nap. You feeling alright, my love? Oh, I'm yeah. just checking. You nervous? You want to talk about it? No. Okay. Okay. And that's it. These are the clues that we have. So now we are all... We are all caught up. Are we ready? Oh, Lord. I don't know how to do this. There we I'm go. I'm spinning around. Get out of my way. I know you feel me, because you like mm. it like this. Mm. And there's manatees. I play a really fun game with Shaba. She just doesn't know that we're playing most of the time. Very if nice. I sing anything, Shaba will carry it on. What is the sound? Death. A hundred little piglets swimming in the pool. They're doing this. All right, so Sorry, we go I this don't way. I think my brain is working tonight. All right, and there were more things like. Library. What was that? Sticky toffee pudding. Stop saying words. Five. Did we see this one? Yes, we did see that one. I was trying to turn around because... You yeah, also look. didn't do one of the riddles on the notice board. The one with just numbers. I think you took a picture of it. <gasps> ah. Let's look at our photos. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right, so we have the break-in at the local pharmacy. That was a paper with a 1309. That must mean something. The etiquette thing that was the same. The letter... Connie wrote this letter and was just like, oh, I know I shouldn't talk about it, but there's this thing that I did. Can you ever forgive me? Scandal. The board. Ah, there's the numbers. Y, D, 3. Number, number, number. Thank you so much, Sarah. Totally the words. What? Where are the words? Well, why would there be a comma? So creepy. That sounds like something. What's the game show that goes? Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. This is my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the. That, that is a joke. Don't save. <gasps> no. Book titled How to Be a Detective. Wait, 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 no, look at the other. What second chance soda? 1130, 1130 11 45. 45. <gasps> Shabba didn't save anything we did today. Oh my god, we did we so did much. We did so much. I'm sorry, Isabel. I'm Sh sorry. Jamie, Shabba, do it too. Shabba, Jamie, do it too. Hi, sorry, my loves. Sorry, we are back. What's wrong? What food would you like, sweetheart? I had a big lunch that we technically could have shared. Then I had a snack before you came home. See, look, there's this, there's this Then I had two helpings of dinner, and now I want more. Two more. Oh. Seven. Let's look at Braille. We, do you want to? Yeah. The game would tell us, though, to look at Braille. Do you, oh, ah. Do you think the library's open now? Should we try? We can try. But we didn't stop playing at 11.45. Did we? Maybe we did. 
Oh, wait, there was a task How's list as well. Right. So, okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's so much to ask. The Haltanaka. Do all Why of Jake it, had the... All of it. But sometimes we can't go back, so what's the most important? Well, I think we need to find out about his injury. I think that one will probably always be there because it's about him. Some... Tanaka. Do you know how Tanaka? That dude is always studying. He's a huge fan of mine. Real smart guy. But I never understood why a brain like Tanaka would hang out with slime like us. Jake. Keep it all you don't. Absolutely. So it seems like Hal was a friend of Jake's. Yeah? Mm. Hal was a friend of Jake's? Let's just say I saw them talking together a lot. Jake's locker was right next to Hal's. But they weren't really friends, is that what you're saying? Dinosaurs are cool! Really Don't say beer as well. Thank you. He may seem pretty chill, <clears throat> but I've seen him crack a couple of times. He's seriously uptight. Crack oh. a couple of times? He's got a temper, a bad one. Ooh. He lets the pressure build and build until he's wound so tight the slightest thing sets him off. Like last week, I strike him out during gym, and he goes ballistic and charges the mound. He's got some serious issues. Now he's that I think of it... Last time I saw them together, Hal seemed pretty upset. Ooh. Should you ask about the video cassette? Do you know why Jake had an empty video cassette case in his locker? I didn't pay much attention to Jake. I'm tired of talking about that loser. Okay. Robbery? Hmm. Tell me about the robbery at the drug station pharmacy. Why would I know about a robbery? All I know about is football. I'm really sorry you got injured. Does that affect your chances of playing college ball? I had a little sprain, no big deal. Within a week, I was better than before and impressing the football scouts. So Connie says it's a permanent in injury, hmm. and he's saying it's not. So he might be covering it Goodbye. up. Bye. Bye. Hmm. Where's our tasks? Hello. Hmm. Ask Hulk about Did the drugs. He doesn't have anything. We need to go to the thingy, talk to Hal about the essay he copied. We spoke to Hal about his injury. My internet's oh, home there you go. So it's in the teacher's lounge computer. All right. Good to know. And we called the judo people and the judo didn't help us. Should we go this way? Beep, 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 beep. Here's the library, right? Let us in! Still no. That's weird, right? It's very annoying. I feel like there's something in that locker. But nothing we can get to. Where is Hal? Wasn't he here? There he is. Hal! You plagiarise? Mm-hmm. You plagiarized your senior essay on etiquette, and Jake knew about it. Yes, Nancy. I'm very ashamed. My family will be extremely unhappy about this terrible mistake I have made. Somehow, Jake found out I copied that old essay. Then he blackmailed me into doing his homework for him. Mm. Why did you copy the essay? I had no other choice. My family won't let me stay in the United States unless I get a scholarship next year. I had mm. to take extra courses to earn the scholarship. Before I realized what I had done, I was buried in work. I copied the essay because I was desperate. What happened when Jake found out? Jake demanded I do all his homework for the rest of the semester, or he would tell my family everything. What else could I do? Kill him? My family was depending on me to succeed. Were you desperate enough to kill him? I was not happy about the situation, but I would never kill anyone. I value human life. He also Please said don't he tell anyone about work. this. I mm. beg you. You will gain nothing if you do, and it would destroy my family if they knew what really happened. I regret what I have done. Please let me have this chance to become a doctor. I promise to make up for this mistake, even if it takes the rest of my life. Doctor! If you didn't kill Jake, do you One have second. any idea who did? When I delivered Jake's homework to him the other day, he mentioned being late for a meeting with Daryl Gray. It was very strange. Ooh. I didn't know they were friends. Hmm. Go on. What's the thing about the doctor? There was something about the doctor and a clue, wasn't there? Doctor to be? 
student files under lock and key will show the lies of the doctor to be. Oh, we already did that. So we did, did that. Boring. Well, you can tick it off. Because we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yeah, yeah, we did it. Should we ask about the... Mm. Do you know why Jake had an empty video cassette case in his locker? I didn't know Jake was interested in video. I avoided him whenever I could. People really seem to Bye. dislike Jake. Very well, Nancy. <laughs> you know when they say, like, Fair don't well. speak ill of the dead? Mm hmm. These guys didn't get the memo. They really didn't. Okay, and then this way, thingy was She's there. She's still missing. But she's still going to tell us off, I bet. Mm. But let's go back in. Here? Yeah. You think we can do something now? Mm. Don't know. Worth trying. There's this map as well. D1, AGD1, but you yeah. have that written down, I mm. think. Nothing on this table except for coins. Nothing here except for some coins. This. But we can't like actually click on anything on the board. Mm. Which is also unusual. Because normally, you can. Okay. We've not come to a board where you can't click on something. So that's weird, right? Yeah, click away. Mm, nothing on these cupboards. It's really creepy music. It is really creepy music. And nothing apart from getting on the screen, which we can't do. Click on it. The computer. L shelf. What happens if you click? Does it give you a keyboard? Uh, you just. Oh, wait, it's your keyboard. See? Okay. What's, what's Jamie's Mel? <laughs> Jamie's Mel's. Yeah, no idea what. Any is there anything on that board? Yeah, but. No, for figuring out the password or anything. Oh. What? Well, the name might be one of those names because they're the administration staff. Mm-hmm. So meeting vacation, I'll stick. Committee meeting, I'll stick. Meeting. So there's... It'll be Trainer, Trainer Hendrickson, Hendrickson Stevens, Stevens, Thompson or Anderson. Anderson. I mean, this, but when it says meeting, what? I don't know. They can't be in the school? This just had a coin on it. This is nothing, which I also find weird. Because there's nothing in the task list about finding... The, look at the task list again, because there's nothing there about finding a password. Um, no, but we can call thingy. Let's call. That's Dan. You want to call Ned? Yeah. They're like, Ned, babe, how do we get in? To the Kampooper. Oh, I love good Doritos. Hi, Nancy. Oh, <gasps> bacon and cheddar fries with ranch dressing. Oh, I need a password. Lord, that sounds amazing. I need a password to get onto the computer in the teacher's lounge. Aunt Eloise probably has that information locked up very safe. Maybe even safe. doubly so. Ciao. Tschüss. Tschüss. Maybe we need to go to back to the house. Yeah, let's Sounds go back like to the it, house. Right? Sounds like Eloise has some of that info that we need. Maybe a key for the library as well. That we haven't been able to... Jickle, jickle, hide, jickle, hide, hide, jickle. Jickle, jickle, hide, jickle, hide. Is it this way? Oh, yeah, we need to get out of here. Uh, this way. This way. This way. This way. This way. Whee! How are you doing that? 
house. Boo kitten, we couldn't click on any of those on the floor, sadly. How many combos is there? Nancy! Oh, I had to close the school library early today. But if you need any research, we case the key to the library is in the safe. Right. Remember and not so to enter is in the password. I think we should look around. If we can't find anything, we should call. This is about the dinner. This is a calculator. Oh. Yeah, there was it nothing really in here, was there? It looks like there's something behind that, but there isn't. Then here. Talk to Jake about library books. Out of order. Jake. Call Nancy, get flight numbers. Call Jackie about Spanish schools. Nothing else in here is clickable. What's that, please? Aunt Eloise committed the murder. I don't think it's Aunt Eloise. Who are you, like, betting on it being right now? We can't seem to go through here either. Daryl. You think it's Daryl? Yeah. I think it might have been Connie. I think Hal's too easy a suspect. <gasps> Why didn't we look at this before? Um. Oh my god, they're so stupid. The six. The O with the line through it. Phi. The K. Kappa. The... Delta. Yeah. Idiots. 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 Chabba. Jamie! What are we? <laughs> Idiot <Idiots> sandwiches! <laughs> there is a key. Let's Ideas, hate. it says on it. <gasps> Doubly locked. That's where the password is. Oh. What else is in here? Do the puzzle. Ooh. Do the roar. Do the roar. I like I'm these. so bad at these. <laughs> okay, I'm really glad you like them. <laughs> okay! I just went with that going there, and I don't think it does. You went with what going where? I'm just playing around. Okay. I think that's the bottom. The dress. Yeah, hold on. Big brain Jamie. Yes, yes, that's what exactly what you're doing. Yep, yep, click it, and then the bottom one up. Yeah, hold on. We just need a head up there. Mm. <gasps> and then that purple one is the, her head in the corner, mm -hmm. so that goes up. Right. Good. If I remember these correctly, I feel like you just need to swap things around until eventually they get into the right place. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh my god, you're so close. Oh, oh no, oh no. Her arm. <laughs> <laughs> Her boob. Oh no, I'm just doing the same thing now. <laughs> Oh, I don't like it. Uh -huh. I'm trying to make that sense of That was the this. chair. Hey! Good job! Good job! Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, wise elder. So what was under double lock and key? That was it. 
Yeah. But what's that? Not Nothing anything. for us. Great. So Back to the school. Good job. Good yeah, job. You find our way around. All right. So we go this way. We're going to the library, aren't we? Just this way. Or do you want to go to this computer? It doesn't matter. Dump. Bum bum. Yes! This was <coughs> not the decor I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Why? For a school library. Those green lights, I swear, were all over my childhood. All over it? Yep, I see them everywhere. Like a rash. In schools. In the desk, in the office, in our house. My dad had one like that. Everywhere. But like a single one. We can go forward. <laughs> we can go left. Wow, there's so much to explore. Information desk. What? Did you do that? Woo! Woo! Said to do something with the magazines. Didn't it? What was I saying? Have information about. See, if it's a steroid. In it's the a library, steroid. have information on the drug stolen at the drug station. It's a steroid. Open it. No. Are you no, doing it's something? A steroid. It was one of the drugs stolen at the drug station. What? You're making sounds. What You're making sound? sounds. No, what sound? I can see no. it on your face. I can see your sneaky little smile. What sound are you making? You need to tell me. I think there's a murderer in here. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so hectanol is a human growth hormone. Can land a dealer in jail. Good to know. Good to know. Chaotic good. I tell you. See, I said to you. Watch out for this Jamie. He's not as wholesome as you might think. I said that. I got you. I said the same about OT. All this... All this talk about treasure. Cha! His little phasmo. <laughs> Trolling. Naps. Oh, maps. Ooh, ooh. Oh, read it. There was a thingy about maps something draw. Fifth? Maps draw? Fifth map draw. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> Sorry. <Let's see. gasps> NAL3. Do you have that one? Nah. That's sodium, isn't it? Nah. Nah. Let's see. Hectanol was the one that was stolen, yes, in the drug scam. The pharmacy robbery, brokery, buggery. Is there a word in here? So a game. Do they move? Take a photo of it. It definitely said there's a there's an exclamation mark. But what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Ah. Hmm. Ian Ma. No idea. Despite all the lies, My dyslexic brain the is masked now. person is also the one who stole the drug, because the prize money. Despite all the lies. What do you mean? A crane contestant, contestant in a mask disguise. disguise won the prize money despite all the lies. I'd assume the lies mean Oh, on steroids, despite being on steroids. I'm not sure. If any... Oh, you're so clever, Sarah. If any anything 
happens to me here. C A R Chonda my comb comb win cat a log catalog 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 if anything happens to me s e a r See, search, search under my combo in catalog. Ethan got there. <laughs> under my combo in catalog. N A L three. This is Eloise leaving us these little clues, huh? Search under my combo in catalog. What's the catalog? I don't know, but it's a combo. Lordy lordy. This music is freaking terrifying, dude. Combo boys? Reference. Where is Eloise? Why can't we see her? She closed it. That's why we're in here. Maybe this is it. Oh, the videotape. The videotape. Do we remember the numbers? Oh, catalog. N A L three. N A L three. Do small a. N A L three. No. N A. Na na na. Oh Jesus. No. What's her catalog? Drew. Uh, Louise. Hmm. Kanji. Under my combo. I thought it told me to look for Kanji. Under my combo. Follow the directions of the secret message in the map drawer. Still have to do that. See if any magazines and library have information You're on the drugs. Check. That's done. Look in the. Uh, research the meaning of the Kanji symbol. Can't check that off okay, yet. I thought I was here. Never mind. Okay. So maybe we don't do this yet. Hmm. Have you got the combination to his locker? Yep, we're in the locker. We did that. Thank you, lovely Ethan. We found a videotape. Older, but no tape. No tapes! Book returns. Can we go this way? This way? No. Can we search anywhere else? Yeah, look. We can go upstairs. Oh, I thought we could. Oh, yeah. we can. Yes, baby. I don't think we can search any of these like bookshelves. Have you tried? Though. Yeah, look. You the, oh, oh. What the frick just happened? Go back down there. Someone just turned an alarm off, right? Yeah. There. Up. This will be Kanji. The elements of this. That one. What the frick? In 17th century Spain, Captain General Juan Ignacio de Santa Ana Domingo was something of a celebrity. Known to say this simply as El Torre, 
He was Spanish royalty's go-to guy when it came to transporting exceptionally valuable cargo from present-day Central America back to Spain. Not only was he an expert navigator, but he was a gifted tactician when it came to naval warfare. He was adept at eluding and, when necessary, defeating the pirates who often pursued his ships. By 1665, he and the seven majestic galleons under his command had become legendary. Ooh. But four years later, a summer in the New World came to a close. The legend took a tragic turn. <gasps> Anchored in the port of Portobello, Portobello. El Toro abruptly ordered his seven virtues fleet to set sail for Spain despite increasingly bad weather and reports the infamous privateer Henry Morgan was in the area. Mm. The cargo he was transporting must have been extraordinarily precious for him to take such a risk, one that unfortunately <gasps> proved disastrous. No. no one knows which the fleet encountered. Henry Morgan, when the hurricane was devastated the Caribbean, is that like Captain Morgan's rum? Or perhaps, or perhaps both. both. But this much is known. El Toro, his crew, and the entire Seven Virtues fleet were never seen again. As with the Nuestra Senora de Atocha of the Tierra Firm fleet a half century before, all had disappeared without a trace. And so, somewhere hidden in the depths of the glinting blue waters of the Caribbean, rest the remains of El Toro's galleons and a treasure so valuable that scores of men lost their lives trying to protect it. Its precise whereabouts remains a mystery, but someday some lucky soul, perhaps armed only with scuba gear, a metal detector, and a shovel, will find it. Someday El Toro will be celebrity once again. Oh, so do you think Connie's trying to find it? Or Dylan, like one of the people whose family have come out of money? I don't know. Mm. Any other books? I don't understand why we were able to go down that one. I think you can go down one downstairs as well. Ooh. One of you can read this one. Side quest, maybe. An overview. One of the most ancient and widespread legends known to humankind can be summed up thusly. Scattered over the earth are 13 humanoid skulls carved out of pure crystal. At some point in the future, fate will bring the 13 skulls together and they will speak, imparting wisdom that will save the human race from annihilation and usher in a golden era of peace and enlightenment. There are several versions of this legend. In one, the skulls were created by Mayans, Incans or Aztecs and collectively form a repository of information detailing how and why humans came to be. Another legend credits their creation to the extraterrestrials who seeded the earth with the human race and left the skulls behind to explain their actions at some point in the future. Yet another contends that the skulls are ancient in origin but more important that each skull is somehow magical in and of itself the distinctive gifts they offer this has gone louder since last time the distinctive gifts that they offer their owners reputedly include precognition clairvoyance telekinesis and of course immortality some variations combine all of the above is that it what is both indisputable and intriguing about the general legend and its smaller colourful variations shan't put the music too low is that several mysterious crystal skulls have indeed been discovered in the past millennium turning up in all corners of the earth what follows is an examination of everything that is currently known about these skulls in hopes of separating the facts of their existence from the fantasy fantasies of human imagination the whisperer the first documented references to the skull, crystal skull, known as the Whisperer, came in 1532, shortly after Hermano de Soto helped Hernando. Francisco Hernando. What are you just reading about? Or is that Hermando? Hernando. Her- I can't tell if that's true. Hernando de Soto helped Francisco Pizarro ambush and capture the Incan emperor Atahualpa. Did you say Francisco? Francisco. At uh, the Battle of Cajamarca. De Soto's aide de camp, whilst updating the De Soto's oh, expedition records. Yeah. One second, lovely Ethan. Yes. Um, noted that during Atahualpa's subsequent imprisonment, De Soto befriended the Incan ruler. In time, Atahualpa told De Soto a secret. He possessed an exquisitely detailed life size human skull that the ancient ones had carved out of pure clear crystal. He happened upon it at the hut oh my of. God. of the deceased high priest, whose astonishingly advanced age had caused his fellow priests out of fear and jealousy to slip him a fatal dose of poison. 
Atahualpa took a fancy to the skull and kept it, and soon realised that the skull, which he contended would sometimes whisper to him in the unearthly voice using unfamiliar words, was giving him immunity to all human ailments. Mm. As long as he possessed the skull, Atahualpa told De Soto he would live forever. But like the priest before him, and like everyone who possessed a particular skull after him, Atahualpa soon discovered that whilst the skull could perhaps perhaps protect him from the ravages of time and nature, it was no match for the treachery of his fellow man. To De Soto's great surprise and dismay, Pizarro had Atahualpa executed. Although there is no other mention of the skull in De Soto's records, it's highly doubtful that the Spaniard would have left such a treasure behind when he returned to Europe in 1536. Indeed, the next documented reference to the crystal skull, which this Atahualpa is the, seems man, this is the treasure. to have inadvertently bequeathed to De Soto, came in a letter written by a nobleman in the court of Philip II, the member of the Austrian Hamburg family who took over the Spanish Empire in 56. While a guest at the Hamburg's palace in Vienna, the nobleman mentions encountering a crystalline head of death which a manservant sword made utterances, strange and low, too terrible for the ear to bear. Apparently, the skull then made its way to France, most likely via Anne of Austria, who married King Louis VIII of France in 1615, because the next reference to a death's head, carved from remarkably clear crystal, can be found in the manifest of a ship belonging to René Robert Cavalier, Sieur de la Salle, a French explorer who in 1684 was preparing for a journey that would take the skull, ironically, back to the new world from which it had come. The fact that La Salle took the skull with him on his expedition to colonise the Mississippi River Valley suggests that he may have been aware of its reputation for conferring immortality upon its owner. But, once again, his real enemy proved to not be the age or disease, but his fellow man. A group of his men stranded in what is now Texas after the expedition. We're just reading a whole book. Landed in the wrong place and antagonized the local Native Americans, eventually mutinied and killed LaSalle so that they could abandon their mission and head for the relative safety of the French outposts in Canada. The Whisperer, however, appears to have been left behind and didn't reappear until almost 200 years later. The photo to the right, July 17th, 1881. Mm. Curtis Caldwell's. Did you hear that? Was that you? No, it's fine, it's just an engine or something. Cures and curiosities, the Whispering Crystal Skull Wonder of the Ancient Incan World. Hmm. The Whisperer, however, appears to have been left behind in Dimri Pertuya. The photo to the right, found in the basement of a library in Jonesboro, Arkansas, suggests that by 1881... Are you proud that I said Arkansas? No. Arkansas. <laughs> Atualpa's crystal skull had found itself in the hands of a travelling huckster who apparently used it to lure potential patrons to his wagon so he could sell them various balms and elixirs. If he's the same Curtis Caldwell who, according to the census record, settled in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, he lived and worked to the ripe old age of 93, dying only when a dissatisfied customer set fire to his house in a fit of anger. If the Whisperer was in Caldwell's house, it no doubt survived the fire, but exactly what happened to it next has proved impossible to discern, and its current whereabouts is a mystery. Hmm. But... What is known about the skull's previous owners could prove very useful in solving that mystery, for all the people who have possessed it have two things in common. They lived for an unusually long time, and they always, without exception, met with death at the hand of another. In other words, the trail that leads to the discovery of this particular crystal skull will likely be one that begins with murder. Oh, this is not a crystal skull situation. Maybe Jake had it. And then they killed Jake. I think we can read some books downstairs as well. He was so young. (gasps) Sparkle. I see you going. No more books here, okay. You want to go back? You want to go this way? You want to look at these photos? You can't, I don't think. (gasps) Sparkle. Period at table. Did you hear the door go? Yeah. (gasps) <gasps> Jamie. What? Isn't this the same periodic table that... Didn't it say something about the elements? Yeah. The order. It's the same as what I've got here, so... HP is 2, is the helium. Wait, isn't there just H? Yeah, there's also, um, H. No, we don't have just an H. But we do have NA now, it's been added. So what did it say about the elements? 
Um, we should have locked the door behind us. Yeah, we can put, get in with the key. Put elements in order to open puzzle. Put elements in order to open the puzzle. Can you move them around? Where are some of the ones that you've seen? HG. No, I don't think we can click on them now. What's Oops. NA? Sodium. Yeah, what is it? Number. Ah. 11. Where did you see that? Why are you seeing sodium? Nah, nah, nah. Ayo. Mug, mug. Jake was here. Hmm. Huh? Weird that we can see that, but we can't interact with it in any way. <sighs> no, no. I want to go that way. Oh, let me go left. Yeah, we definitely can't go left. Okay, so what do you think? That we need to go check the books downstairs? That periodic table may just have been your guide. But I've put most of them in order and they don't make any sense yet. I wonder if we have some missing. You see the rows of books on the other side. See, oh, what was it? Ethan said search on the. Why are we searching for those numbers specifically? Go to one nearest. Okay, no. You're right. Oh, Jake on the phone. Worth a try. Like his locker thingy. Sure, got it. Gemstones and how to identify them. Ooh. Gemstones include any number of crystalline rocks, which when cut and polished can be used as jewellery. Their commercial value usually depends on how rare they are, although beauty is certainly a factor as well, because gemstones are, more often than not, found by accident. It behooves... Maybe someone found the crystal skull and it's worth a lot of money. We need to read all this. No. I think it's useful to know that it's here though. Okay. Hey, Madonna. Werewolves. Since ancient times, the cunning savagery of wolves has been both terrified and awed. Wait has both terrified and awed the humans with whom they came into contact. In Europe, where wolves were a constant threat to livestock and allegedly to small children and known travellers, legends as to their evil viciousness became widespread. Predictably, one of these legends involved humans who could transform themselves into wolves. These creatures were called werewolves, were means man, and the transformation came to be known as lycanthropy, lycanthropy. What the symptoms of lycanthropy? Descriptions of werewolves and of transformation process has been was very greatly throughout the ages. Some lysanthropes assumed the precious appearance of a wolf, others turned into something that was half human and half beast. Sometimes the change was permanent, sometimes they could change form at will, sometimes environmental factors brought about the transformation. The symptoms and duration of a werewolf's condition depended entirely upon the curse that initiated the particular case. In general, victims who were destined to alter their form permanently usually appeared pale. Fatigue was a frequent complaint, as well as weak vision, a dry tongue, and constant thirst. These symptoms usually accompanied or were soon followed by hair growth, especially on the face and hands. Fingernails grew long, and the eyes gradually changed shape and colour. It's very pretty. The victim's personality also changed. He or she became increasingly ill-tempered and aggressive. <gasps> Connie's a werewolf! 
Mm-hmm. As the transformation grew more apparent, the victim usually went into hiding, returning to society only to satisfy its newfound appetite for human flesh. For temporary victims who could change their appearance at will, or who were involuntarily transformed by the sound of a wolf's nocturnal howl, or by a full moon, lysanthropic symptoms occurred not over time, but quickly, almost instantaneously. They were forced to assume that's creepy human form again at sunrise either by shedding their hair claws and fangs or by taking off their skin and hiding it intact Ugh. such a lysanthrope would reportedly suffer the same fate as its shed skin if it was found and destroyed the werewolf would likely be destroyed according to legend those who voluntarily became werewolves obtained the ability to change their form through sorcery involuntary lysanthropes were people who had been cursed by someone they had wronged or had been bitten by or born by to a werewolf since there was no cure, and since most werewolves were thought to be immortal, these unfortunate beings were compelled to lead dark, desperate lives until they were felled by a fatal wound to the brain or heart that they could only be destroyed by a silver bullet. It's a modern establishment. Embellishment. Embellishment. Do we need to read more about this? No. Interesting. There's no more, anyway. Apart from the why people turned into werewolves, it, it is interesting. I'm just confused as to why this is of importance to us. You know. Look at our task list. We want to go this way. What did Ethan want us to search? We all definitely have to search something. Jake on the. What was it? Five two five three. Did I get that right? Don't remember. <gasps> Under my seat. J A K five two five three. Take a photo. Takes perfect photo of the screen. So, do we need to find where Jake sits? We can't get in any classrooms, can we? It was up here. It said Jake was here. Do you remember? But yeah, but I don't, we couldn't do anything. Jake was here. Oh! <gasps> Whoa! These are not. Oh! No! These aren't the same as the other ones. The puzzle. Puzzle. Oh. Interesting book in. The hidden videotape will seal my murderous fate. Do you think there's a tape in there? Maybe. Maybe. But put elements in order to open... The puzzle. Puzzle. I was just going to, I was just thinking that plants. Do you think? Is there a book next to the Jake was here note? Yeah. It says chemistry, but we can't read it. Interesting. What happens if you click stuff? I don't think this is what we're supposed to do. Stop then. I just wanted to click every button. Checklist says something about Greek symbols. Oh! Look for evidence. Did that. Follow the directions of the secret Check. message in the map drawer. 
Look around the library for clues. Still have to do that. Okay, so we're not done. Look, Look around. around. Aunt That's Eloise done. is for Greek letters. Which maybe the cover. I know. Yeah, oh we yeah, got we that. did that. We do that. After. Oh, the kanji. Still have we to still do need that. to do that. So we we haven't finished searching the library for clues. Yeah, so I think we need to continue going back. What are you? Kagi. Koniku. Zunga. Shamba. Yes. Lalu. Hug. Mm. Oh. <laughs> library clues. Library. We got that. It's not this one. 